We investigate cases of the paranormal. They start in the realm of the unknown and end in the black vault. What is a ghost? Is it the soul of a dead person, a shadowy disembodied spirit haunting the living? If so, what kind of ghost might emerge after the death of someone evil? Today's story concerns the strange occurrences surrounding a desperate woman, a dead body, and a house full of buried secrets. Let's open the black vault and investigate. Rootstown, Ohio, 2005. 85-year-old Peter Wesley was dead. In reality, he's had one foot in the grave for the last 20 years, but had been kept living and breathing by his put-upon 35-year-old daughter, Julia. She stood over her father's lifeless body and felt relieved, more than relieved. She felt free for the first time in her life, a life that, up until now, had been in service of her ailing father. As of 8.30 p.m., that service had officially ended. But his withered, gnarled body had to go. Now, it had been just the two of them for as long as she could remember. Julia never knew a single, solitary day when she was alone in the house. It had always been her and him. As long as his body still required her care, it wasn't over. Julia picked up the phone to call Dr. Harris. It took all her strength not to explode into maniacal laughter as she described finding her father dead, having died peacefully in his sleep. She requested the body be removed from the house immediately. Actually, it was more like a demand. To her frustration, Dr. Harris informed Julia that it would be impossible. Roads to the house were flooded, neither him or the hospital would be able to reach the house until the storm passed. It had rained nonstop in Rootstown for three days. The Wesley house sat on the outskirts of town, flanked by five miles of thick forest. Dirt roads to and from the house were transformed into overflowing shallow rivers. The Wesley house always seemed to be hiding away from the world. That week, it was practically cut off from civilization. Julia was trapped in the house with her father's dead body. She opened up a bottle of wine, a special bottle hidden in the back of the cabinet, saved for this very occasion. She made a toast to her freedom. Freedom from the violent outbursts and verbal abuse. Freedom from the adult diapers and soiled bed sheets. Freedom from never having to hear him whisper. I'll never let you go. At 35, Julie had never seen outside of Ohio. She hadn't even crossed county lines, but now she would. She sipped the wine straight from the bottle and listened to the wind and sheets of rain battering the house. A rat scampered past her feet. She angrily attempted to stomp it. Those damn rats. Ever since the basement flooded, rodents have spilled into every corner of the house. The rat poison didn't kill the little ones, but it worked great on the bigger pests. That's when she heard it. The sound echoed above her, then again. She wondered if a strong gust of wind had pushed a window open. She heard the sound again like someone was walking across the old floorboards above her. Julia moved slowly up the steps to investigate the strange sound. She stopped at the second floor landing. The house was quiet, other than the sound of the storm raging outside. It's an old, restless house, she thought, one that was known to groan and whine when the weather turned nasty. Julia stopped at her father's door and hesitated. It was out of fear, and that fear was a habit, that feeling of misery on the other side of the door. But there was nothing to be afraid of anymore. Her father, once a force of uncontrollable rage and spite, 
was nothing but decaying tissue now. Whatever hold he had on her was gone, like the final breath in his chest. She pushed open the door. The room was dark and quiet. It still smelled of rubbing alcohol and bleach. Julia moved in closer. Her father's eyes were open. She didn't remember them being open. She also didn't remember the corners of his slack mouth turned up, revealing the faint hint of a smile. Julia leaned in. There was a loud pounding at the front door. She jumped back, startled, dropping the wine bottle. Maybe the doctor changed his mind, she thought. Or maybe he called an ambulance and they made it through the storm. Julia raced downstairs, feeling the cavalry had come not a minute too soon. She threw open the door, and no one was there. Just the darkness of the surrounding woods. Julia warmed herself in front of the fireplace. She recalled a thought that had crossed her mind once. She didn't remember exactly when. It must have been one of those especially bad days when her father seemed to relish in her suffering, like it were a game and only he knew the rules. Julia remembered wondering about evil people and what happened when they die. Would a black soul leave an equally dark stain on the world? like a slimy residue. Or maybe, evil can't ever truly die. The power went out, plunging the house into darkness, except for the flickering light of the fireplace. Julia wasn't surprised. The house's electrical wiring was ancient, and the old man was too cheap to replace it. However, thanks to Peter's reliance on life-saving medical equipment, a gas-powered generator had been installed in the basement for emergencies. Julia always hated the basement. It was like a damp, dark tomb. She would daydream sometimes, when her father could still walk, that he would trip on the steps and tumble to the concrete floor, breaking his neck instantly. Then she could nail the door shut and leave him down there to rot. Or maybe the rats would have at him. With flashlight in hand, she sloshed her way to the far end of the basement where the generator sat. It would take forever to pump the water out, she thought, but maybe just leave it, pack her things and move away. Let the house and all its painful memories sink into the muddy ground. That's when she noticed ripples in the water circling out from the dark corner. She whipped around with her flashlight and froze. Her father pointed at her from the shadows, his eyes bulging, his mouth twisted into a frown. Julia's heart seized in her chest. She blinked, and the nightmarish vision of her father was gone. No, Julia said defiantly to herself. In that moment, her desire for survival supplanted her fear. She swore never to be terrorized by him again. Julia grabbed a steel shovel leaning against the wall. The rain was still falling hard. It stung like needles against Julia's face as she drove the shovel's spade into the ground. She sent clumps of mud and grass flying through the air as she dug with an obsessive fury. It was a cold and miserable night, but Julia dug and dug, remembering how she had always dreamt of this day. The day when she would see him lowered into the ground, a lump of rotting meat, being devoured by worms in a dark hole for all eternity. She had always told herself that there was a last time for everything, and this was it. No storm, no muddy ground, no ghost was going to get in her way. Julia raced back into the house and up the stairs. Her father continued to lay still in his bed. She glared down at him, remembering a promise that she had made to herself, that he would never, ever outlive her. As Julia lifted his corpse off the mattress, 
She could feel his muscles stiffening. It was like pulling a sack of wet sand across the floor. Her mission was clear. She wouldn't wait for Dr. Harris or the ambulance. His corpse and all his inhuman menace needed to be out of the house now. She would only be free when he was in the ground. Julia dragged Peter across the backyard, leaving a trail of mud from the house. The rain had already begun to fill her makeshift grave with water. She heaved her father's rigid body into the hole. He slid into the muddy water with a splash. Julia filled in the grave, watching with glee as he disappeared under the shovelfuls of mud. She stood back, taking a moment to appreciate the mound of dirt that stood between her and her dead father. Julia hoped his memory would be as easy to bury as his twisted body. She turned to head back to the house when something grabbed her leg. She choked on a scream. The torrential storm that had engulfed Rootstown stopped two days after Julia placed that call to Dr. Harris. With the roads drying, he was finally able to visit the Wesley house. Julia hadn't been answering the phone, so he was concerned. The front door was open. Dr. Harris called out to Julia, but received no response. The house was quiet. On the floor, a trail of muddy footprints went from the front door up the steps to the second floor. The good doctor found Peter laying in his bed. He looked peaceful, almost as if he were sleeping. Dr. Harris examined the body. Peter was certainly dead. However, the body showed very little sign of decay, surprising after two days. But where was Julia? Dr. Harris investigated the property and eventually found her buried in the backyard. Her hand stuck out of the ground, reaching for the sky, almost as if she had been dragged down, down into the mud. It remains a mystery what happened in Julia's last moments. Dr. Harris reported her death as a freak accident, but the look on Julia's face, the horror, he had never witnessed anything so terrifying in his life, and it was not something he would soon forget. One last item of note, Dr. Harris performed an autopsy on Peter. A fatal quantity of rat poison was found in his bloodstream. A ghost can be many things, a messenger from beyond, a harbinger of events to come, and in Julia's case, perhaps a promise kept that he would never let her go. Join me next time for another mysterious case of the paranormal that emerged from the depths of the unknown and currently resides in the Black Vault.